In this video, I'm going to talk about the similarities and differences between the reaction quotient and the equilibrium constant. These are two things that students usually have a hard time telling apart. They're very similar to each other. The reaction quotient, which is abbreviated with a Q, and the equilibrium constant, which is abbreviated with a K, are both numbers that we can calculate from what we call the equilibrium expression. The equilibrium expression is it's kind of like a formula. It's usually a fraction. And it is just simply this formula that we can use to calculate either Q or K. Let's write an equilibrium expression for this equation right here. The format for writing an equilibrium expression is the same, whether you're going to use it to calculate a Q or calculate a K. In the equilibrium expression, we are going to take the concentrations of all of the product molecules. So we're going to be starting on the product side. In this case, we have NO and Cl2. We're going to be taking the molarities of these molecules. The way that we abbreviate that is by putting the formula in square brackets. So I'm going to make a note over here. When we put the formula NO in square brackets, that is our way of abbreviating molarity of NO. So we're going to take the molarities of our products, NO and Cl2, and we are going to put them in a fraction over the molarity of our reactants. In this case, we only have one reactant, so there's only one thing on the bottom. And in this expression, every one of these molarities gets raised to the stoichiometric coefficient. So the stoichiometric coefficient of NOCl is 2, which means that the molarity of NOCl is going to be squared. The stoichiometric coefficient of NO is also 2, so that means this is going to be squared. And Cl2, because its coefficient is 1, we're usually not going to put a 1 here. So sort of the mantra that we have for writing an equilibrium expression is that it is products over reactants raised to their stoichiometric coefficients. To calculate or to do math with the equilibrium expression, we would need to know what the concentrations are of each one of these things, and then we would plug those concentration values into the equilibrium expression, and we would get some sort of number. And this is where the conversation takes us to reaction quotient versus equilibrium constant. When we plug concentrations into the equilibrium expression. If we are using concentrations for the reactants and products when the system is in equilibrium, then we call this mathematically, the result of this is the equilibrium constant. So this would be an equilibrium expression that is calculated using concentrations, molarities, that are accurate when the system is in equilibrium. We are not required to only plug equilibrium concentrations into the equilibrium expression. We could plug any concentration that we want into the equilibrium expression. When we are using any concentration that we want, not necessarily equilibrium concentrations, then we call it a reaction quotient. So reaction quotient is going to be an equilibrium expression that is calculated using molarities that are taken not during equilibrium. So maybe before the system reaches equilibrium, or maybe something happens to the system that causes it to lose its equilibrium, those non-equilibrium concentrations, when they are plugged into the equilibrium expression, the number that comes out on that end is just referred to as a Q. We can get quite a bit of information about the value of Q and also the value of K. It tells us a lot about the relative amount of products versus reactants because this is a regular fraction. So we know that if the value of K is very large, typically greater than 100, that means that we have a large amount of products relative to a small amount of reactants. And we say for a situation like this that the system 
or the reaction favors the products, meaning that there is a greater amount of products than reactants. If we have a very small value of K, and our, our definition for that would be 0.01, one hundredth, in that situation, we are getting that size number from having a large amount of reactants and a small amount of products. So this we would describe as a system that favors the reactants. And if our value of K is somewhere in the middle of these two numbers, so somewhere between 0 0.001 and 100, that type of system we say is pretty well balanced. It doesn't really have a strong preference for either the products or the reactants.